Hey, check this out. It's going to be a classic. Now, Robbo. Yeah, mate. I've got this brand new top secret box. It's okay. It's top secret, yeah. all right. I've got a brand new lid. I've never used it before, but I want you to give it a go for me. Yeah, mate. So on the count of three, I want you to pull it back and see, do. It, see if it all works. Okay, I'll test it. You ready? I'm ready to test. One, two, three. <laughs> Oh, that's perfect. <laughs> oh, I love that. Oh, <laughs> that's a red back and a half, that is, isn't it? <laughs> now you tell me, who wouldn't want to make one of these? Ah! <laughs> love it. He's biting me. Stop it. Bad spider. Very bad spider. G'day folks, Uncle Knackers here from DIY for Knuckleheads with another super simple DIY scrap wood project. And as per usual, if this is your first time here, welcome and please hit that subscribe button and make sure you click the notification bell. That way you'll never miss a project ever, ever again. Bang. So if you're looking for that perfect prank to scare the absolute living bejeebas out of your pesky work colleagues or family and friends, then the spider scare box is the one for you. And the good news is, is that it's very easy to make. I'm going to show you how to do that step by step. So make sure you watch right through to the end of the video to see exactly how that's done. And I'll even throw in a few good old dad jokes for good measure. Alrighty. Let's get this show on the road. Now the spider scare box is a scrap wood project, which is fantastic because it means it isn't going to cost you much to make it. But of course, if you haven't got anything lying around the house, you'll have to go out and find something. For example, pallet wood, that would be perfect and it's free. But for me, my spider scare box is going to be made out of this sheet of 12 mil ply, which is actually a ramp that the kids use their BMX bikes. They won't even realise that I've cut anything off it. <laughs> They'll be none the wiser. Mark my words. Hey Dad, have you cut any wood off this ramp? What's that boys? Have I cut anything off your ramp? No, no, no! Why would I do that? As if. Seriously. As if. Now to make the scare box, it's very simple. We're cutting the sides and the back to a height of 135 millimeters, which is roughly the same size as the width of a wide pallet board. Now, before you get too excited and start cutting all your pieces to size, we need to cut a rebate along the two sides of the scare box so that our lid has somewhere to slide in and out of. Now for my lid, I'm using six millimeter ply. I think it's going to look a little better, not quite so heavy, but I also had some of this lying around. Remember, this is a scrap wood project, and we're trying to do it for as cheap as possible. So if you haven't got that six mil ply, don't panic, just use whatever else you're building your scare box out of. Now the reason why we're cutting that rebate now before we cut any pieces to size is that while the sheet is as big as it is we can place our clamps all the way back there which makes using the circular saw safer, easier and the saw doesn't come in contact with either of those two clamps. Beautiful. Now obviously if you've got a router or a table saw you could quite easily do that cut but this is kind of a limited tools project, so I'm only using tools that I think most people would have lying around the shed. Okay. And as far as where to cut that rebate, it's really simple. We'll kick off from the top of the scare box and go down 12 millimeters, or roughly half an inch to the top of the rebate. Now our lid is six millimeters wide, so I'll cut the rebate to a width of between eight and nine millimeters, and that'll give plenty of room for the lid to freely move backwards and forwards. And we'll set our saw to a depth of six millimeters, which is half the thickness of that ply. Now, a really easy way to get a nice straight cut for that rebate is to use the fence that comes with the saw. Place the fence up against the outside edge of that ply, and then adjust it 
until the outside of the blade lines up with that line right there. Then just do a series of cuts, continuously adjusting that fence until we get to the other side over there. And please, when making these adjustments, make sure the saw is not plugged in. And there she slides. Beautiful. Okay folks, we're getting there. All the pieces have now been cut. Ah, oh, look at this little fella. He's a good boy. So cute and deadly. Alrighty, back to business. If you want to make your scare box the same size as mine, these are the measurements. Now, this is all in metric. If you want Imperial, I'll leave an Imperial converter in the description box down below so you can check that one out if you want to. Alrighty, this is the bottom. These are the two sides. Here we have the front and the back. And finally, the lid. And it simply goes together like this. There's the sides, the back fits on top of the bottom, and in between the two sides, the front does basically the same thing, and then the lid will just slide in here, just like that. Beautiful. Now with all this talk of scare boxes and spiders, I think it's just about time to lighten the mood with a couple of good old dad jokes. And as per usual, on the dad joke rating scale out of 10, let me know down below. Okay, joke number one. What are spider webs good for? Spiders. <laughs> what, not good enough? Okay, tough crowd. I get it. How's this one? What do you get when you cross a spider with a cob of corn? Cobwebs. <laughs> Not bad. Not too bad at all. And finally, one for the bigger kids. What do you get when you cross a spider with a squirrel? A bug that'll run up your leg and eat your nuts. <laughs> Alrighty, enough of the dad jokes. Rate me out of 10, let me know down below, and now back to the project. The next step in the process is we need to make an axle for the spider to swivel on. So what we have here is I've cut the end of a wooden broom handle, and I've also got a couple of lengths of dowel that I've found lying around the shed. The wooden broom handle is 22 millimeters, or roughly an inch in diameter, and I cut it to a length of 90 millimeters, which is about three and a half inches. So all we need to do is to find the center on both ends, drill a hole the same size as our dowel, and then just simply glue and drive in those dowels. The job's done and we're ready for the next step. Now here's a quick little tip for you. If you want to mark a depth gauge on your drill bit, say you want to drill down to a depth of 20 millimeters, get your texter and mark the drill bit like that and then slowly start the drill up, hold the texture against the drill bit. And there you have it. There's your 20 millimeter depth gauge. With the axle now made, we need to find a spot to fit it. So what we have here are both sides. That's the back, that's the front. That's the back, that's the front. So when they go together, they will be like that. So all you need to do is from the front, on both pieces, from the top of the box, go down 60 millimeters, then from the front of the box, go in 38 millimeters, and then drill a hole slightly larger on both pieces than the diameter of that dowel. My dowel is nine millimeters, so I'll be drilling the hole 10 millimeters. And just be careful that you don't drill all the way through.
slow and easy. There's no trophy for coming first. And I reckon that'll about do it. Let's just give it a check. And there you go. See how that spins freely? That's just what you want. And I didn't go through the other side. That's a miracle. The next thing we need to do is to cut this axle to size so that it fits inside the box. So all I've done is I've centered the broom handle between the two sides here, just like that. And you might be able to see that I've marked on these dowels the inside of the box. One mark there and one mark there. Now, these holes that we've just drilled are six millimeters deep. So from these marks, that one, and that one will extend them past another five millimeters each, cut them off, and then we're good to go. Now, before we go too much further, I just want to give this a little test to make sure that we don't need to make any more adjustments for that axle. So if we put the back on like that, and that spins beautifully, perfect. And now all we need to do is to cut our coat hanger, just like that. Lovely. The next thing we need to do is we need to attach the coat hanger to that axle. So all you need to do is to find the centre of that wooden broom handle and then we'll drill a hole down low, not in the middle, but down low, and then we'll be able to fit that coat hanger into that hole. Just make sure it's nice and tight because we don't want the coat hanger coming loose. And this is what you finish up with. Too easy. Now this is the tricky bit where we need to bend this wire so that when the axle spins, the spider launches out of the box. Now to make that whole wire bending process thingy a bit easier, if you're making your scare box the same size as mine, I've drawn up this PDF, which you can download and copy from my blog post in the description box down below. So make sure you check it out. Alrighty, as you can see, this now works an absolute treat. <laughs> How good does that look? And now all we need to do is to attach some string to the lid and to the axle, and then we're ready to glue everything together. Now, just in case you're wondering how I attached the spider to the coat hanger, I drilled a really small hole through the spider's bum and one through his mouth. And then I forced the coat hanger through the spider until it just came out the end right there. And then I applied a dab of glue there and there, and the job was done. Too easy. The next job on the agenda is to attach the string to the axle and the other end to the lid. And the reason for the string is that when it's attached to the lid and you pull the lid back, that will operate the spider. Now, to attach the string, what I've done first is I've cut a little groove in this piece of broom handle just there, which is in line with the coat hanger. And we'll lay the string in that groove and then apply some hot glue to it, and that should hold it in place. Looks pretty good. When they say hot glue gun, they mean hot glue gun. Ooh. Alrighty, we'll wait till that dries, then we'll come back. Okay, that glue is now nice and dry, and it's pretty strong as well, so that's good. Now all we need to do is wrap that string around the axle clockwise, just like that and then place in the lid. Bang. Now watch this bit very carefully because this is what you have to get right. Slide the lid in position and then place in that front section just like that and we'll clamp that off so it's nice and tight. And you can see there there's a little gap between the underside of the lid and that front section just there. Now find the center between those two edges and put a mark on the lid. Now hold the string on that center line and try and pull it out. Nothing happens. Pull it out a fraction more and the spider's trying to come out. A bit more, 
is, oh, is almost there. We'll just bring it out a fraction more to there and bang. That is the spot that we want to cut our string off at and attach it to the underside of the lid. And the hot glue gun to the rescue once again. That's perfect. And we'll just wait till this dries and screw everything together. Beautiful. Now the reason why I'm screwing it together and not using glue is that if something goes wrong inside the box, I won't be able to get to it if it's been glued together. Now with the knob that we'll use to open the lid of the scare box, place it in a position so that when the spider launches out of that box, it's going to hit the fingers of the victim, which will really ramp up that scare factor. I'm liking this more and more. And this is how it turned out. What a cracking little project. I absolutely love it. It looks fantastic, very simple to make, and I think the writing on top is enough to entice anyone to open the lid to see what's inside, and it works like an absolute charm. So if you wanna see more projects just like this one, make sure you click on the playlist over there, which should be coming up about now. So that's it folks. I hope you enjoyed and found that video useful. And as per usual, a big thumbs up is always greatly appreciated. And if you could hit that subscribe button, that would be fantastic. Alrighty, thanks for watching. Until next time, be good, be safe, and I'm out of here. Cheers.